Okay. Good. Right. Hello everyone, Wireless Films here, back with a new vlog regarding to the upgrades to Farquhar. And uh, yeah, it's just a little update to let you guys know what's, what's been happening there and uh, what's been done so far since the last uh, uh, vlog, which was, uh, I think it was before Christmas time. So, uh, so yeah, hope you guys had a good Christmas there and a uh, very happy new year to you guys as well. So, hope you, hope you all got what you wanted for Christmas. I know I did, because I uh, finally got one of those. Uh, on the remagnetizer things from Ronald Dodd. So, Ronald, if you're listening, thank you so much there for the remagnetizer. It works really well, and uh, it's a real asset to the to the workbench. So, last time you saw me when I when I was doing the uh, vlog or the upgrades there, I was busy relaying the track round uh, from the station throat to the tunnel mouth here, and I was using the P the Pico set track points. So that's what's been done so far. I got as far as here. And uh, that's why I stopped recording. And uh, the reason why I had to stop recording, I didn't film this bit, because this one's actually quite difficult for me to do. So doing it on camera would have to be like, you know, a one take, or I have to go through so many editing tutorials anyway. But anyway, the problem was that when I first began building this layout, uh, this version, back in 2015, yep, um, I forgot that the original plan from, for this build was to have the track screen in the tunnel to be laid on balsa wood and not the foam underlay. So this went over the top of my head, forgot all about it until um, I think it was done well into uh, halfway halfway through the building of the layer when I had all this all uh, applied in the scenics. And I just thought like, oh, I'll have to rip this up all again and try and find a way of redoing it all. So <clears throat> that's why I waited until uh, after I did the, the 10 year anniversary video, just so I have how the lead an operation is to test run the, the YouTube Thomas model and then once that's done I would dive into the upgrades. So that's what's been done. I actually um managed to get some balls to where that was the same thickness as the uh, foam underlay to get to the right track level. Laid inside the tunnel tunnel here. Uh, in order to get in order to get access to the tracks in there, I actually managed uh, there's a wee trap door here at the back of the tunnel and there was just enough Pressure. I have to, just have to give enough pressure to lift the whole section of the tunnel out there. So that's going to be the only time where I'll have to do this. And uh, I'll have to glue that all back into place now for the, uh, the next show. Because once it's folded up here, that's going to be sagging back up again. And it won't, it'll just be all untidy. So anyway. So that's all done. Uh, got all the tracks around here. Resoldered the tracks to be soldered onto the new screws, which uh, are screwed into the balsa, balsa right there, and that's just just to keep the tracks aligned when the boards are lined up together. And uh, track wires are all resoldered onto there that again. Then after that, there I managed to proceed on to get the fill yard tracks all relayed. Added an extra siding into the quarry uh, sidings as well, just for the convenience of uh, local operation and op layout operation and so forth. And uh, then just this uh, lay the track onto the quarry tramway. There's a little bit of a kink in out there that has a few, causes a few derailments for trains, but it's not really much. And uh, once this video is done here, I'll uh, I'll see to that and make sure that's that's uh, permanently fixed. And uh, and after that, there once I had the, once I had a full circuit going, a test ran right there with uh, my Repath Thomas there uh, with uh, Gavin's new chassis. And uh, it worked absolutely fantastic. It worked absolutely fantastic. Ran very, very smoothly, and there was no derailments at all, apart from the, uh, the wee small kink, as I, as I mentioned there on the tramway. But Thomas isn't going to be using that that much. But um, yeah, I just, just have to sort that. Just get that sorted out, and that'll be the track sorted out. So then, once I got the loop, the, the whole circuit done, redid the station area here, fixed up a few kinks here that I had on the run run loop and uh, a few issues I had over by the loco um, fuel section. Now, and also, in order to get access to these tracks here, I had to take up the road crossing as well, the crossed over it, but I've got some card there which I'm going to use to replace that there, so that's, uh, that's going to be something I'll be doing, I think maybe uh, tomorrow night, I think I'll work on that. So, the, uh, let me see my, what else we've got there, oh yeah. So once I had finished with uh, the track and got it all relayed again, the next stage was to try and get the layout rewired again because, again, like with the like with the balsa wood uh, track bed, the one thing that went over the top of my head was that I had built this layout so that it would it would be more it would be more helpful for me to sort out some certain problems like for example track wiring because most times when I'm doing track wiring I mostly would have be underneath the layout and I'll be 
have my arms all up there, my arms get all very, very tight, trying to solder wires on and screw them into chop up, uh, electrical connectors and that so forth. And uh, having the layer designed so that I can fold it up into a box and then I can work from uh, like a tabletop view, it would make things a bit more easier for, for me. But again, like I said with the uh, balsa wood uh, underlay method there, this went over the top of my head and I completely forgot all about it. And as a result, I have wires coming down like, uh, just like spills of spaghetti, that's how I can describe it. Um, and, it was like, and the whole thing was just like a, like a jumbled up spider's web. It's like one of those golden weaver spiders you see in, in uh, those jungle island things where you see that their webs are all like a huge tangle of mess. That's, that's pretty much what it was like underneath there. So, um, and as a result, I kept worrying, I kept worrying. Sorry, give me one second. Who's texting? Gavin, I'm doing the vlog. Stop. <laughs> Knuckles is texting me. Is uh, sending me messages here and uh, talking. Are you doing the vlog? Yes. Yes, I'm doing it now. <laughs> I'm keeping this in. I'm keeping this mistake in there just to just to prove, just to answer his question through <laughs> this here. So anyway, um, yeah, the wires. Um, so yeah, I, I was just worried in case, like, you know, when I was taking the letter to a show, a wire would get pulled out at some point, because they were a bit low at the time. And uh, as a result, one did. And thankfully it was only for a point order in the film yard, so, but it was easily fixed um, when I got the letter reassembled again. So after I got the track laid, I just basically just turned, fold the layer over from the station side, and then just disconnected all the, uh, the point motors from the wires and the switches and that there and just rewired the whole thing and, and, and pretty much it's all tidied up now and it looks, more, it looks a lot more better now and uh, the only wires that are hanging down from the ledge are the ones to connect the power from one side of the ledge to the other and then that's it, that's pretty much it there so I've tested all the point motors there, there's a few um, points that have been wired up to the wrong switches and uh, some of the point motors are moving in the wrong sequence uh, than, than what they should. So, but that's, e that's easily fixed. It's easily fixed there. So it's just a matter of just swapping the wires around, and that's pretty much it there. So, but that's pretty much it. That's all needs to be done there. So, with the wire noise sorted, the only thing left to do is to tidy up, tidy up around the the track edge, where I had the original uh, track taken up, where you can see like bits of the the baseboard and all showing. So, I'm just gonna be I'm telling you, I'm using uh, this stuff. This is the this, this is the uh, Javis dark brown seed scatter that I used for my uh, the track edge around uh, one of the layers. Now it's a wee bit uh, contrast right now because the stuff I used before it, it's uh, it's aged over time, so it's it needs uh, it needs more time for the color to tone down a wee bit or to uh, you know get the right sort of color that will match in with the the ballast on the underlay, so that's that's all needs to that's all needs to be done there, and uh, just tie up just tie up a few areas here, maybe add a few tree more trees if necessary, and that's it. That's pretty much all that needs to be done. And there's, oh yeah, of course as well, we do the left the crossing and the barrel crossing there. If there's any areas there where I had where I had to have any sunny getters taken up for the convenience of relaying the track, and that's pretty much it. That's all that needs to be done for. For the layers. Now there's one little additional feature which I, I installed here whilst I was actually relaying the track and it's for this setting here, this good setting here and this is just uh, an isolation switch I added in because in the film yards I have, um, let me see how many do I have right now, uh, let's see one two three four, four isolation switches I have there and I have one spare which I originally had for the quarry settings but don't need that anymore so I used that, I took the switch out of that and uh, incorporate it into this um, this siding here. So that's actually for the convenience of uh, for Percy when he's shunting the train. Because looking up in the looking at the uh, the operation uh, stages of the layout, which I have copies of, of on the uh, the wall there, which I'm going to take to its ne the next show to help me out. The um, the operation sequence says that Percy starts his shunting but stops halfway to make way for Toby with his uh, quarry train. So. What's going to happen is that uh, I'm going to be having Percy shunt like the oil tanker, the coal trucks into the sidings over there, leave the brake van there as well. Before he goes on to, to the runaround loop to run round and uh, leave the cattle wagon and the box van into their sidings, he will pull up into this siding here and that's, and that's will give me this, that gives me the signal to flip the switch and uh, all power 
onto that section will be cut off to uh, allow Toby to come out, do his, do his, uh, his bit, uh, bit in the operation sequence, and then goes around to do uh, go around do do a circle of land and go back to the fill yard as said in the operation sequence, and then. Once Toby's gone, flick the switch again, perhaps he finishes shunting, and then goes to get his quarry train. So that's pretty much it. So it's just for the sake of uh, making things on the operating section a bit more easier, and uh, it adds a bit more of the, you know, makes it, makes it a bit uh, interesting for people to see. So that's pretty much it there. So with that, with that said, um, the only thing that, that, that's just left, it, that's apart from all those, yeah, that, that's pretty much the layout ready, pretty much ready to go. For its next show. Now, the next thing so I would then have to look at, which I'll probably have to spend all of March on, is uh, seeing to my locos and rolling stock because they're they're the important assets for the layers. Because without a railway, without trains on a railway, it's pretty much just a static display. So I'm just seeing to see of getting all my engines all up and running, and uh, some of them I'll get some services uh, done to them. Whereas some are just getting like you know touch-ups and repaint and new models made for them, so forth. So I'll give you one example here, which is, which is Toby. There's a fellow who meets me at the model railway show, and he always asks for Toby when uh, when he, when we meet. So um, I'm just getting Toby all done up now in a new color now. So uh, he's gonna this this one's just gonna represent the model as it was during this slide's time. And uh, but I will be doing another one. I'll be doing a locomotive tutorial video on how to make the Red Audrey's version of Toby. Um, that I'll be, as I said, that'll be done after the the show. And as well as that, I'll be incorporating a bonus video as well, which will show you guys how to build the spare Toby that uh, the Red Audrey made for his layout. Now, as well as uh, the regular Farquhar fleet for this layout, I'm going to be having some guest engines on the layout, and one of which actually did run on the original Farquhar branch line. Well, not the, not the actual model, but um, I mean, would I, would I have the actual model here with me? I mean, I would, I would, I'm not worthy enough to, to have, have one of the, those models on this layer. So but anyway, I've, rep I've made up replicas of these guest engines. So here's one of them. Uh, but I'll save them for later on, for the next bit. Here's one of them. Now this one only appeared on the, on the Mark II version of Farquhar, and that's Oliver. Anyway, so I don't know if the camera will focus in on there because you can't see on the viewfinder. So that's all over there. He's made up from a case kit, same case kit that the Reverend Audrey used for his model. And fortunately enough, it's actually got the same number as the original one as well, so that's very convenient as well. So he'd be making a, he might make a few guest appearances on the layout. It runs okay, it's, uh, the motor's really bit loud, but I've read up here that the, the, the motors that this model, these models were fitted with were known to be quite uh, loud and sometimes didn't work all that well. However, the other gas engine, which is another case model, is filled with a, with a motor that actually runs very well, actually, very smoothly, and that is Stepney. Now, this now Stepney actually did run on the original Farquhar branch line, as well as the Mark II version, so Stepney and Oliver will be making appearances at the end of each uh, operation sequence on the layout with uh, some enthusiast trains. And the enthusiast trains like the originals, are going to be made up using the rail bus kits from Dapol. And uh, what I've done here is I've fitted some Backman coach bogies onto them. And uh, once they're once they're all sorted out, there, I'll change the couplings over to make them look to have them have the Spratt and Winkle type, just so they they work okay with the couplings here, and uh, they'll be good to go. So I don't know if I have those ready in time for the Bangor show, um, but I will. But if not, you'll probably might see me working on working on those in between sequences. So that'll be something worth to look out for. So that's all I've got to say, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning into the series. Next time you'll see this later, maybe be before the show or maybe afterwards, but we'll see how it gets on. Now, if you excuse me, I have a message to send back to go. He's gonna he's gonna kill me when he sees this. <laughs> so that was right. Alright guys, see you soon.